Are we live? We might be. I think we are. Oh my gosh, you guys. You're watching Ballerina Badass. <laughs> my name is Georgia Reed. And I don't even know where to look at the camera. I know. You're like, but Georgia, isn't it only 9 a.m. where you are? Like, shouldn't you be awake and frisky and ready for the day? No. No. And you know why? Because maybe some of us stayed up late watching uh, the Sandman series again on repeat. Because we're worried that all of the streaming services are going to take away all of the fun, wonderful shows, and we can't have nice things anymore. So uh, before we get started today on the Point Street Party, which I'm really excited to have them back, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you are here, put your chat in the chat box, questions about Point Shoes, etc. If you're watching this post live stream, I hope that you get a couple of tidbits out of it for what to do or not do or whatever with your point shoes. That's what it's about. The reason I'm doing this today, <clears throat> again, it's about accountability. So I am, my goal for this one is to go through all of my point shoe accoutrement to kind of gather it back together and go, okay, what do I need? What have I got? What what needs to be tossed, etc. cetera? Uh, the last time I was dancing really full time or at all um, for, for ballet was 2017. Yeah, it's been a long time. So, uh, in one of my previous posts, I talked about the fact that when I went out to the garage to go through things uh, back during COVID, we discovered that we had rats and they had used many of my old point shoes as nesting material. Don't leave your point shoes out in a garage, by the way. Hint, hint. Or just don't get rats maybe. Hmm. That could be good too. But uh, I had a few pairs salvaged and luckily they didn't get this beautiful brand new pair of Russian points that I still have. So I'm going to be working on these today, assuming that I get to the sewing because again, this is only going to run about 45 minutes. I'm keeping it short. Uh, but if you're wondering exactly what is a point shoe party, Georgia, you can look uh, on my previous videos, playlist sections. It's just like a sewing party. It's like a quilting bee but for point shoes, right? Because it's it's fun to have friends to, to sew with, I think. Most of the time as a dancer, I found myself, I was either just sewing during rehearsal, where you, you know, or sewing watching TV at night, or sewing in the morning. I don't know, you're always sewing, right? All right, so again, I've got the Russian point shoes. I've got, let's see what we've got here. I've got, this is what happens with dancers. You know, it, it, it feels a little bit like, it's like your dancer paraphernalia. Um, I've got one baggie with some things in it. I, I, I like the baggie technique, by the way, when you're dancing professionally uh, and you're trying to rummage through your dance bag to find something really quick. Um, this should not be in here because this will poke through it. But this is a trick from backpacking and hiking, camping, etc. I, I, I used to backpack quite a bit. I would love to get back into that. That's another story. You put things in clear plastic bags, that way it's just much easier to see what it is that you need, find it and get it. Plus, of course, it keeps it waterproof. But uh, you're like, well, Georgia, when is it gonna rain in my dance bag? Well, it might not, but maybe you'll spill your water bottle in your dance bag and you'll be happy that you kept things in plastic. Don't put your point shoes in the plastic bag. You know, moisture is the point shoes enemy. So unless they're bone dry, don't do that. Just keep them in a separate bag and even hang it on the outside of your bag, that's better. Let's see what's in here. In here I have True Match L'Oreal Super Blendable Makeup. You know what I use this for? I think I use this um, kind of like a Calamine Lotion Substitute. So you just take it and pat it down on your shoe to give it an all over uh, similar look. We're gonna throw that away. Bye bye. Next I have, oh there's a name for this in the sewing world that I've forgotten, but um, a seam ripper. This is my mom's seam ripper, oh my gosh. And seam rippers are great for when you're trying to get uh, something ripped. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay, let me give an example. Let me see. If, ah, there we go. If you sewed something on your point, you sewed a ribbon and you're like, oh, actually, I don't like where it was sewn. Or you're harvesting ribbons from an old pair of shoes. Put on a new pair. Don't worry. I'm still going to use you even though I find you a problematic shoe. You use the seam ripper, right? Um, trying to use scissors just isn't as good. The seam ripper, I love. You see the pointy part, and then you've got the non-pointy part here, but you take it and slide it 
into that little seam and then you boop rip and it will surgically pull out those stitches and it really um it protects you get to salvage a lot of the ribbon you salvage the shoe it's just such it is such a great tool for ballerinas it's better to get one and maybe i'll find my old one in here you can get ones with covers on them so they're not stabbing you in your bag or stabbing things but i highly recommend this okay so we're, we're going to keep you we like you what is this this iodine tincture i know what this was so this was for you put it um on your toes before you get any blisters or anything it helps um harden and dry the skin so that's a good thing to keep around for toe health i need a separate baggie for the toe health section um, i think i actually took my toe tape out of this uh kit to use right now i'm helping to uh picket on the wa strike lines so i pre-toe tape my feet excuse me so that i don't get blisters and then i have some nail polish the nail polish and again look it's just like this cheap skin tone um i use that in place of a lighter to kind of um to keep to keep things from fraying so if you want to you can use nail polish clear is better on the edges of your elastic or the edges of your ribbons uh it'll keep them from fraying i much prefer though using a lighter i'll be interested to see if i still have a lighter in here and then i have a bunch of needles you can never have enough needles this guy was pre-threaded with some old thread we're gonna throw that out i'm gonna put this needle back in the needle kit so it is safe it is amazing how this was left behind. Okay, so keeping that, keeping the needles, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to keep the nail polish. And, oh, God, that's old. So bye-bye. Okay. Going to possibly throw out this baggie too. It's pretty old, but we'll see. Let's see what's in this. This, you guys, this is my pencil bag right here. I kid you not, from high school because it went with a matching backpack. Who is this by? Caribou. Hi, caribou bag. But I've kept this for all these years. Okay, look at all the, let me see all of the, there's stuff in there. What do we got? Elastic. We're going to have a lot of elastic today, I think. We've got dental floss. This is what I use for thread. Now, on the one hand, um, this is why I like it. It's waxed, by the way. Let's be clear. Waxed dental floss. It's just, um, it's sturdy and it slides through the shoe much more easily it doesn't knot as easily and uh and it's easier to pull out when you're in a rush the only trick is you have to make sure you have good uh solid knots that um will prevent it from coming unraveled that's the tricky part this oh my god do you see this this is where it gets weird this is part of like a shoe insert and it's cushiony and i would save this bits like this to put like as a use as a padding if my heels were feeling my heels never really suffered but sometimes maybe the ball of my foot was feeling a little bit tender and i'd put this underneath it so i could dance on it but then that throws off your balance that's a little weird i don't know if i'm gonna keep that or not we'll see i need more coffee one moment mm. Mm. there we go okay this you guys this is my darning uh, thread, and I love this because um, this is what I use on the tips of my shoes. You're like, oh, you don't use wax thread? No, that you don't want a slippery material on the tip of your shoe. You want something that's going to kind of grip the floor. You remember, some dancers they'll darn the entire bottom, some just darn around the edges. It it's uh, it will help the shoe last longer. It'll protect some of the satin a little longer. I think it creates more of a platform. I like that for me since I have a more tapered uh, foot, right? So this, I'm pretty sure I just got it at uh, like a Joann's or something. And I've had this, this is, I've had this for years. There's so much thread in this. So great, we keep that. Yes. More pads for the bottom of my feet. But uh, they haven't been used, so I must have bought these right at the very end for 
padding and then just didn't get around to it. Oh my god. A random hairnet. Oh, but we're not. Look at that. Hairnet. <laughs> and bobby pins. There's always bobby pins everywhere. We don't miss that. That's a leftover. This is so exciting, you guys. I know. There's just leftover detritus in here that I'm like, why did I keep this little bit of uh, ribbon? That stretch ribbon. No, we're going to get rid of that. Um, that's another. This, so again, this is something that I looked into. Because my foot, I have the Grecian foot, which means the second toe is longer than the big toe, which actually means that instead of my, if this is my foot, right? Instead of where the big toe is, Instead of this being like your main platform, because this toe is longer, it actually throws my foot off and it feels like, so then it's like you're not dancing on a solid flat platform. You're dancing on this wobbly platform and it's like you're kind of dancing on the edge of a knife. And it's true, I would always sink down off of that middle weird bone onto my my big toe platform. If this is making sense, I, I need to do a bigger video on this, but... The point is I wanted to try and even out the playing field, which sounds like it's a thing about fairness. No, it's about leveling the playing field of my foot when I'm on half point. And by putting this under the big toe, under but under that um, sort of uh, that knuckle there, then it makes things more even. So I am going to keep you, even though you're a little, ugh. This is an old modern dance. Uh, footy. I like that. That's fusible. That we can keep. We have more elastic, y'all. More elastic. Here we go. Love it. Okay, what else? Oh, more ribbon. This is a good piece. Um, you know, you've got a certain length, right, that you won't go past. You won't want to go shorter than. Uh, if you have a good length of ribbon, keep it. All right. That's decent. It's satin. It may need to be washed. We can wash it. More. Oh, that's good. More waxed thread. This trash. Post-it notes just for notes to remind myself of things. Okay, I don't need to put that in the toe shoe kit. That is trash. I saved baggies. Nope, that is trash. Uh, this is a uh, like um soft stuff to put over your areas of your foot where you you've rubbed it raw well before you rub it raw you put this on beforehand so we're going to keep these those are good like moleskin kind of right that is good for foot protection put that over with the tincture and i think a lot of these are going to be trash you guys this is good get it all cleaned out how are we doing on time okay good good, good. i think we're not going to be able to get to do a little bit of sewing today we'll see Oh my gosh. Okay, little baggie. Are you all empty? I think so. Hooray! So I have random green thread in here. I'm like, why do we have random green thread? Maybe I had we had a costume that needed it. That's gonna go out. More waxed thread. So we have three. That's good. Another baggie. That goes over here. Ah, we have a lamb's wool toe pad. So way back in the day, right? First it was just Freeform lamb's wool, um, just a puff of it, and you would kind of mush it around your foot into a shape. And then people started doing the pre made lamb's wool toe pad that you just slip over your foot really quick. And then, of course, things have gotten more and more advanced and fancy. And I, I, I'm, I'm curious, I wonder how many dancers still use the lamb's wool toe pad. I'll put that in the toe protection area. Hmm. We'll put that trash. Aw more needles but they're not covered so we'll put this excuse me in the kit elastic can i not stress enough how much you want to save your elastic band-aids that's good to have in a pinch why do i have more green thread in here maybe it was to fix the green <laughs> toe kit i think over there a sharpie sharpie i would use definitely or a pen uh to mark the shoe uh, uh, my feet are different enough I can't swap my shoes back and forth once the shoe is fit to us to one of the feet it's gonna stay on that foot so I will name each shoe oh we have someone hi hi I made the perfect point toe pads and they were just awful my pinky toe was blistered immediately I have one more kit any tips in the process 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So we have a question about the perfect point toe kit, which I happen to have right here. This is it. Oop, I know I saved the instructions. Why? I don't know, but I did. So it sounds like, first of all, Gordian Slip, Fraudian Slip, I love your name. That's great. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining Gucci Party. It sounds like if your pinky toe was blistered immediately, here, here's the deal. And this is one of the big arguments about what you put in your shoes. Some people will say, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Some people will say you want to keep your toes as dry as possible in those shoes because they're going to sweat, they're going to rub, and, and sweat, you know, moisture and friction are just the enemies of the dancer toe. And so the first school of thought is you only use paper towels. Second school of thought, well, lamb's wool, it's a little more breathable, a little, le little less sweaty. And then if you're doing something like perfect fit, again, they're using this mold of ingredients that I'm sorry, at this time of the morning, I didn't check beforehand, but it's made of certain things. Is it silicone or something, really? I don't know. And I'm sure the lovely perfect fit people would say, Georgia, no, that's wrong. But the point is, it makes this stuff that doesn't really breathe. Now, the piece that goes around it does. That's good. I love my perfect fit point. I'm not going to lie, uh, but I'm not dancing multiple hours a day right now. By the time I was trying these out, I was already like not um, dancing full time anymore. I was just having fun. So if you're, what's tricky is when you've, because it, this mold, it, you shape it around your toe. Look at that. It's fitting my toes perfectly. My question to you is, did you, did you, Put the putty on to mold on your toes when you had a band-aid around the toe or without the band-aid. I don't think the band-aid should make a difference or even toe tape. I feel like you should be able to wear it with a, with a little bit of stuff in there or not. But my advice to you, my first thought is, if you want these to work, it would be to either try things like tincture. You'd put tincture on your toes, which will help sort of uh, dry them out. You can also put new skin. Do I have my old container? No. So new skin is uh, something you can get that you can, it's a like basically it's a liquid band-aid. You can uh, paint that on your toe before you put it in, or you would do, the best thing for me is you use toe tape. You would toe tape that toe before you put it in here. My only concern is that the tape might start to move. Um, but that way, you're, my point is you're pre-protecting your toes before you put them in here. Um, and then maybe it wouldn't blister. So there's that. Also, I need to know how long um, how long had you already been dancing before you do you already have callous toes, or are you a new dancer and you're trying these out? Because it could just be that thing of well, if 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 you're a you know if the toe the toe would have blistered either way is my point as it's starting to build out. Okay, so without yep. I'm seeing the comments coming in, so I'm trying to make sure I read them too. Uh, that's my concern. If you're a new dancer, your toes are still developing their calluses, then one way or the other, you're going to go through some blisters, I'm sorry to say. And the key to that would be um, to immediately, you said you got it right away. You want to clean it. You want to drain it. You want to protect it. My trick, I've said this in other videos. I learned this from an old school dance teacher. So agree with it or not, everyone has their way. But once you've drained the blister, you don't, you, and you pop it, you, you get a sterile needle, sterile, clean, rubbing alcohol, whatever. You pop the blister on the side, not on the top, just on the side. If it's already popped, try and salvage as much skin as you can, right? Clean it, let it dry. But then you take toe tape and you wrap that toe several times. I know you go, wait, right on top of the blister? Yes, right on top of the blister. And then you just leave it on there for like seven days. It's going to look yucky and gunky and icky and look. And I, I worry about, is it going to get infected or not? But I did it over and over and over again. Not once did it ever get infected, but you have to leave it on. You leave it on when you shower. You leave it on, etc. And then in seven days, you take it off. Toe is healed completely. That is my way. Check with your doctor, with other people. They may say I'm crazy and disagree, but that is my method. Um, you had asked a question. I want to step off a second. You had said, did it, when I put the putty in, did I do go heavy on the bottom or, or, or the tops of the toes? Mine definitely goes heavy on the top. Again, if you look here, so I'm opening the foot. 
this is all right this is the top right and that's where i want the coverage you want the, you want as little coverage as possible in the bottom because that's where your toes are connecting with the shoe and they're the thusly the floor right so um, you want them to be able to move down there but up above is where i want the coverage and the support now every foot is different okay so this might be a question you might want to ask also on um, that uh, famous point shoe fitter she's got the point shoe shop online it's amazing but i am so sorry that you got a blister so fast that totally stinks okay you've been dancing many years that's great you have the second toe bigger than the first oh my gosh okay got it yeah yeah it is it's tough so yes i would say let your let that blister heal give it one more shot okay give it one more shot pre-tape the toe or try the uh liquid band-aid or and then also start looking into do some more research on anything i say here do your own research too don't just go georgia said it so i'm just gonna do it i used to be that person and you want not only just because it's it's a wiser choice in general to get you know not even second opinions but you're making your own decisions then you feel more confident in what you're doing and um i i just feel that's i just feel that's the better way with anything in life kind of like when you're researching theories and positions and rumors and anything politics religion science you, well you know science um, i i fully believe in science uh but uh still do your own research tincture okay so look into that uh you put it on your toes um, you'd put it on at night before you, after your shower and it's just starting to, um, strengthen and harden the skin. Okay. So yeah, these do cost a lot. I wish you luck. I hope that it works out. Do keep me posted. Would you, if you give it another shot and, and if you're trying to do a new mold, here's what I recommend. Email them. Okay. Email them, call them. They're, they seem to be a really nice company and go, guys, here's the deal. I'm a professional dancer or I am a full-time dancer and I really want these to work. Um, I've heard great things, but the particular set that I got, it just didn't work out uh, the way that it molded. Um, is there any way you guys could possibly send me a second kit? Uh, I'm willing to do a review of it online or on a blog, whatever, to sweeten the deal to them, but don't put that out in the first email, okay? Save that for later if they really balk, but just ask them and go, guys, please, I would really appreciate a second kit, okay? Um, and see if that, if you can remold and do it again in a way that'll work for your foot, all right? I hope that helps. I love talking about this stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna finish up. I've got a few more. Look at this. I've got random bits. Again, the reason, at least for me, why I would save these random bits, you're like, God, it just looks like trash on the, your table, Georgia. But bits like this are things where like what we're talking about here, sometimes just the tiniest bit of a shift in what you put in your shoe, it can change your balance, it changes the comfort, and from day to day, um, you'll have like a little something that, that's a little bit rubbing on a certain part of your foot, and you're like, oh, I can feel it, it's rubbing, it's off, and you just take a little bit of lamb's wool, and you tape it to that side of your foot, and then all of a sudden, ah, oh, good, I can breathe. And let me tell you, when you are dancing a full-length ballet, and partway through, you feel a weird rubbing sensation and you know there's going to be an issue with it. You need to fix that and fix it right away. And so it's like you're doing triage on your feet. That's what it is. You're doing triage on your feet backstage. The number of times you are going to see a beautiful swan queen sitting on the ground, tutu up in the air, foot up. Look at me. I'm wearing Crocs with socks because I like the, I don't like the cold. I put my socks over the thing. So it keeps me warm. I know. Um, I just don't like it. Okay. We're going to take that off. Oh, it's happening, you guys. Foot in the air, two, two out, and they are trying to fix some part of their toe to wrap a little piece of a boo-boo thingy, like just putting like sometimes right here between these two toes. I know. Look at that terrible bunion. I know. These are, this is not from ballet, you guys. My, these are hereditary, okay? Um, my understanding is they're all hereditary, but apparently they can be exacerbated by, by dancing. So I'm sure there's conflicting theories on that, but, uh, just want you guys to know that don't look at this and go dancing ruined her feet. Mm -mm. I would have had these no matter what, but right here between these two toes here, sometimes for whatever reason, whatever you're doing a particular ballet, 
a combination, whatever, over and over and over and over again. And when you do that same repetitive movement, um, depending on your technique, you're all, that's part of why you're trying to always fix your technique, technique, fix your alignment. Remember, for me, it's early. You're always trying to fix it so that you have less issues of rubbing or problems. But regardless, this is going to happen in sports and everywhere. So one day, maybe this will start to rub in a weird way over and over again, and you're developing, it gets you know hot, and then a blister can develop. So you'll take a piece of this and just shove it in there because you don't have time to do a full fix on your toe. But you're like, oh, you just shove it in. You put the point shoe back on. You're like, how does it feel? Oh, it feels good. Great. Get back on stage and go. Finish the class, whatever. Then afterwards, you can do a full review of what happened to your feet. Foot care is so important in dance, and what's so frustrating about it, at least for me, is I can remember when I was really young and doing it, uh, working full time, you finish your day, you finish the show, and all you do is you just want to go home and go to sleep. You're like, oh my God, I'm going to sleep. I'll fix it tomorrow. It's like, I know you want to do that, but really try to do some self foot care before you go to bed, right? And not just an ice bath, like it's also, you know, massage, um, moisturizing, checking for all the, you know, uh, exercises. There's so many things you have to do. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this little bitty piece. I'm keeping it with this, I'm gonna keep it right there. But I should create, you know what? We're gonna bring this little baggie back. I'm gonna use this for, and I'm gonna call it my little bits and pieces or odds and ends. Now, I don't have too many here. Normally, I would have more, but what I will put in there, actually, with the other bits and bobs, bits and bobs, I'm going to use that little heel piece that I saved. Again, if there was a day where I had felt, for whatever reason, maybe you land on your foot wrong and you feel an injury in your heel, like that bone hits, oh, I hate it. You're like, well, Georgia, wouldn't you just stop immediately and go to the hospital? Dancers don't do that. <laughs> you go, oh, dang, I've injured my foot but I need to finish this rehearsal. What do I do? You put this under your heel. Uh, you would put like a sock over it, like a very, um, you, uh, you would keep a very thin sock, slip that over it to hold it in place, tape it something, whatever, slip it in there. Usually the shoe will hold it in place enough. And then you keep going to finish the rehearsal. Is this healthy? No. Is it uh, smart? No. But is it the truth of the dance world? Yeah. And this happens in sports across the board. I had a friend who was uh, playing basketball. He was going semi-pro to pro. And he told me, uh, you know, they were, I mean, they were recruiting him hardcore. He was up there and it was happening to him. And so he had some kind of terrible injury. I don't remember what it was, if it was his back or what. But what they would do is they would just roll him off the court, pump him full of cortisone, cortisol, something. They pumped him full of some kind of stuff that basically takes, numbs the pain and then just send him back out onto the court. That doesn't fix his injury. It doesn't heal it. It's just taking away the pain. So the, the, the part is still broken. You're now working on a broken part, which is making the injury worse. It caused all kinds of damage for him. Now, again, you're like, oh, are you trying to scare us away? No, I'm just explaining the reality of it. Uh, just be aware on the one hand, we all hope for company directors and studio directors and um, adult figures or even friends in our lives who are going to care for us. But when it comes down to it, especially you know in companies, maybe they don't maybe they don't always have your best interests at heart, or maybe it's that they they don't have the bandwidth, they don't have the time, or whatever it is. Their their focus is on getting the performance done. Your focus is getting on the performance done, but also taking care of yourself. And this is your body for life. And as someone who now is many years past it, I will let you know it behooves you to care for your body. Because if you don't, you pay a, a bigger and bigger price later on. And when I say later on, I'm not talking in your 80s. I am talking in your 30s and 40s. So care, take care. All right. Now, any other, so put that in there. You're like, oh, Georgia. This isn't a point shoe party. It's a ramble, ramble, depression party. What the heck? <laughs> okay. And again, these pads, these are great too. I got these at like CVS. They're for, you know what these are. You, if you don't, back in my day, when women wore heels and pumps 
and you get that pressure again on the ball of your foot, you slip this into the shoe and it's got a little sticky part here that you peel this off and it kind of sticks to the shoe so it stays in place and then it gives you a little more support. Um, it's not a lot here, but that's what I like. This is really thin and you want, I mean, God, I'd love to have a whole ergonomic foot pad in my point shoe, uh, but then you got to really get fit, fitted for that and then you can't feel the floor. So you can't put a bunch of stuff in here, but this is thin enough especially also for ballet slippers, this is really good. Um, and you can cut pieces out of it to work around your foot as needed. All right, we'll put that bits and bulbs. Bits and bulbs, la 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 la. I love that I only have one of these. I'll have to find the other one. Another hairnet. <laughs> I know you're like, ooh, hairnets with point stuff. I'm not proud of this. Again, when you're in it, you're just tossing stuff in bags. Look at this, do you see this hairnet? Some people would look at this hairnet and go, that is a pro that hairnet needs to be thrown away. Uh-uh. I see this hairnet and I'm like, no, this is still good because there's a whole section here that's still usable. <laughs> Did I mention <laughs> dancers are all about reuse, reduce, recycle, recycle, reuse, whatever. Um, yeah, you can wrap that around your bun and make it work. That is still a worthwhile hairnet, I know. Oh my God, you guys. And then we have... We have a whole ton, I know, of bobby pins, trash bits. I know, it's so gross. You guys, you're like probably going, Georgia, you're gross. Yeah, I, I admit it. And um, and what else? Bobby pins, gross bits. That's really it, just bobby pins and gross bits. So we're going to pull all the bobby pins out. You you want to um, you want to sanitize your stuff every so often, right? Drop them in some rubbing alcohol some white vinegar, etc. because all this stuff gets really grody. Gross. All right, and then all the trash. Bye-bye, trash! Yeah! I'm going to quick grab my toe tape. It's right over there. Stay put. I know you all are just dying to know what's going to happen next. La, la, la. Okay, we're throwing all the trash out. This is good juju. Look at all that. Bye-bye, trash. Bye-bye, trash. Here goes the trash. Trash, trash, trash. Yeah. You are icky. They're all going away. I think that. Okay. Where is the toe tape? And I think I also have. I do. Hooray. Okay, you guys, this is good. I also have the new skin. This is the new skin I was talking about. Liquid bandage. I'm going to go do that with their phones. I don't have to do it here with my computer. But this is great. Look at that. And it's got a little paintbrush. I used this the other day. I'm going to actually make a couple of videos to help the WGA writers strike people. They're starting to get, you know, blisters and tired and worn out and I want to try and find ways to say, look, do a little warm up beforehand, do a little cool down afterwards. And here are a few preventative messages, preventative steps you can take for your feet. But I uh, will put a little bit of this right here on my heel, right here. Because this is where I start to feel a rub, like a burn. And then also right, I know you guys are like, what are you doing? Right here. I'll just put a little bit of that on and let it dry before you start dancing. Uh, and that just creates a little pre-bandage to battle potential blisters, rubbing, pain, etc. This is the toe tape I love. I got this at Target. I don't remember the brand. I'm sorry. It is a cloth tape. I adore it. And what I love is, look at this. It's nice and wide. Pulls really easily, but look at this. I don't want to waste too much. But it, easy to rip. That's important. The times where you're like, I'm going to try and rip it, and it doesn't really rip, uh, and, it, and it folds, and it's icky. And then what I like, look at this. Because it's so wide, I can pull it down the middle, and that's great for my little toes that I want to wrap. And it's, uh, I can just go like this. Whoop. And yes, now here's something you need to notice. Look at that. I'm like, oh, I wrapped my toe. Look, it's wrapped. Hooray. This is not good because it hasn't connected. And if the tape doesn't fully wrap and connect, it's going to get loose. When you sweat, it's going to, and then it's going to bunch, and then it's going to create more problems. So in this case, because we got to save tape, I would take the second piece and use it as a connector. All right. I get you don't want to pull it tight. You don't want to constrict your toes ability to breathe. You just gently lay it over it. 
There, that is a fully taped toe. Now this toe is ready to go. And if you do that before you put your pointy shoes on, you will have potentially less blisters. They're still, look, they're still gonna happen somehow. Not as much though, all right? It's a process. So that's the tape, Target. If When I find the brand name, I'll let you know. And then I also found ah, this needle. This is my darning needle. Wait, is that the one? That can't be the one. It is the one, wow. This one's almost too thick for darning. Um, it's tricky, you've gotta find that balance because you want one that has that nice big needle eye. So you're gonna put that thread through that needle eye and it needs to be strong too because if you use a really thin needle when you're darning, trust me, it's gonna break and it's so annoying. And there's nothing worse than having a broken needle and you're trying to get it out of the shoe and it's a pain in the butt. But this, right, you need it to be able to be strong enough to get through this part of the shoe, but also pointy enough that it will, you can still get it through. So I don't really know. Well, I'll we'll try this one out. And again, the way things are with timing, we may not start sewing until next week, but this is, this is my live stream and I'll do what I want. And for me right now, it's making sure I've cleaned out all my stuff so that I'm ready to move forward with the point shoes. Okay, here we go. Ah, found this. This is a very valuable tool. Thimble, thimble people, you can get metal ones. This one's a plastic one. I love this because again, when you are trying to sew and you, whichever, you're using a needle, you're sewing your shoe and there's, there's just a lot of material here for the needle to get through anywhere. There's different areas. It gets stuck and you can't, you can't, pull the needle through and you can't really push it through because it's just it's 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 going to stab your skin that is what the thimble is for you can really use that thimble up against the needle and push it through the fabric highly recommend keeping a thimble in your sewing kit all right now let's see anything else here's the, i know you're going to go oh my god when are we going to sew georgia I'm, I, I'm probably not going to get to sewing today. You're going to send me your questions if you have questions about your sewing. And in the meantime, you can already be sewing your shoes, all right? Because I'm, I'm going to try and do these every couple of weeks or so. <laughs> um, but definitely if you have questions, send them to me. Now look at this. So I know you're like, oh my God, look at that, a whole nother bag. Now this one has mostly elastic in it, all right? But I'm going to see what else is in here and clean out what I don't need, right? We're getting rid of the old to make room for the new. What is in this bag? Look at this random baggie. Pillows. I don't know, some kind of dance stuff. Come on out. What are you? I use it as a trash bag. This is a trash bag. Yep, okay. I hope there are a couple of Band-Aids. Ha! Ah! Perfectly good, clean, well, yeah, clean. Band-Aids. We're keeping the Band-Aids. Throw out the trash. You are going to go into the laundry. Okay, next. Oh, yes, good. All kinds of things I was looking for. Hooray! A lighter. Now, in the old days when you saw a lighter with a dancer, that's definitely because they were smoking cigarettes. Because I had friends who at 16 were smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, which I think was fudge nuts. Did I smoke? Mm -mm. Every once in a while, if I really got angry, I would smoke a cigarette or I thought it was cool, but I could never finish it. Um, it, I think it's, for me, it's gross. I like everything around, I love all the, again, I'm gonna use this word again. I love all the accoutrement around smoking. It's very cool, 12 pack, da 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 da. But um, it makes your finger smell nasty. It makes your breath smell nasty, it turns your teeth yellow. And for me, it feels like I'm ingesting horrible rat poison. Plus it gives me the shakes. I don't like smoking at all. I do not recommend it, especially for dancers. Other dancers, people thought it would help them lose weight. Well, now people are injecting themselves with all kinds of medicine that's not intended for weight loss, but they're using it for weight loss. People do really foolish things. And you know what? Uh, I, I can judge them all I want, but I have made other mistakes in the past. So let's not be too judgy right now. I just want to stand by my statement. I do not recommend smoking, and especially for dancers. It, it, again, it's, not, it's, it's just not worth it to me. 
I found the other modern dance toe pad. Hooray! And what, what I love about this one for me, a lot of them, like they'll have like all five toes separated. I can't do that because my second and third toe are slightly connected lower down, which yes, all the kids made fun of when I was little. I was, I have been so self-conscious about my feet my whole life. Um, but this one, it's just the big toe goes in here and then the rest of the toes go here. And I like that. So we're keeping them. Hooray! Here's where we're going to see. Here's another kind of toe pad they used to make. And this one was really popular before the perfect fit came along. What is this? This is some kind of stretchy fabric, okay? Again, Georgia should do her research so she can say, this is made of blah, 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 but I don't have that right now. Again, we're happy to be awake at all. So check it out. Um, the, what I had never thought this was good because that seam goes right up against my, um, my bunions and that uh, hurts. So I didn't like these as much, but a lot of dancers swear by these. But what I would do is I would take them and I would chop off and just use the bottom bit. And that seemed to work out for me. So you'll see here again, dancers are constantly trying to come up with different ways to do that. Another pad to put under the foot. You're like, Georgia, I'm seeing a pattern here. Ah, here's the leftover putty. Thank you, Freudian slip. The leftover putty from the perfect point. I can't, there's not enough here to make a whole nother set, but um, I don't know why I'm keeping the rest of it, but I am keeping it. Maybe it's time to throw it out. I don't know, we'll see. I gotta look at that. Put that over there. Another pad. Ah, I do have, did you guys know this? Look at, okay, I'm, I'm gonna throw this one out. This is a, a nail file, which is good to keep. Definitely, you know, keeping your toenails trim is really important, but if you trim them too far, then you know the skin's going to pull away and you've got problems if they're too long then it's going to be problems so you're constantly trying to find that balance well sometimes it's just a matter of a little bit of just shaving off that little bit of the nail that's going to get it at just the right length i was what do they say today years old when i learned uh when an old when it gets old you just peel it off not that to the next there's another level underneath hi my spouse is here Okay, this one, it doesn't work, but apparently on some of these, there's multiple layers and you pull off the layer to reveal another layer? Well, it didn't work with this one. This was a cheapie. That's trash. Bye-bye. Now, look at this. Elastic, elastic, elastic. Can you tell dancers don't want to pay for a lot of new elastic? Because again, every little bit counts uh, towards money that you have to spend. But you don't want to spend because you don't have hardly any money. As a professional dancer, and you go, what do you mean? Well, professional ballet dancer, right? So a lot of these, look at that. You'll see, you can see all the leftover sewing stuff, and the ends are frayed. What I need to do with these, one by one, first of all, you're like, well, they're different lengths. Well, that's true. It'd be nice to have them all uniform. But let's just take this one, for example. So but what I would do with this, what do I need to do with all of these? First things first, got my seam ripper. Um, I want to clean out any leftover thread out of the elastic. Okay, now scissors are another important thing you want to keep in your kit. I'm in a small pair. Look at that. Toenail clippers. Uh, let me get some scissors quick because I want to show you what I will do with this. Okay, here we go. Let me just use these for now. So then you'll take your scissors and trim off whatever little bit of fraying. You don't you want to take as little off as possible because you're trying to salvage the length of the elastic. I've used elastic over and over a few times. Every time you pull it out, you know, you don't want to cut off too much. Look at that. I just cleaned up the end and then take that lighter. Now it's tricky. When you're using your lighter on your ribbons, that's just satin. They'll still flare up, but it, you're, it's not as much of a deal. But in this one, I'm burning uh, elastic and that can get tricky. So you want to be careful. Let's see if this even works. Look at that, it's so old. Did you see this? Oh, it's so old. <laughs> it doesn't even work anymore. Wow, that's creepy. You're trash too. Hold on. You're like, Georgia, where do you get all these things? I got a lighter. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend carrying this in your bag, by the way. But I want to show you guys. Oh my God, the danger. 
don't put it near the blue part. You want it right on the tip. Look at, see, it's already, already catching on fire. Now, again, you have to be careful with this because when it catches and that elastic melts, it can create this really hard ball of melted elastic. And you're like, eh, so what? You're going to sew it into the shoe and no one will see. Well, that hard ball of that, this here can also rub on your foot. It's still drying. That can cause friction on your foot, even through the uh, tights that you're wearing. So you're constantly trying to smooth out the edges, remove anything in the shoe that's going to cause friction. Yeah, this is a really, this is an old piece, so I don't love this. This might be a situation with these where you'd prefer to use the clear nail polish, all right? because it will um, seal the elastic and keep it from fraying, but hopefully won't be um, as uh, rubby against your foot. I know you're like, Georgia, what words are you using? All words are gone. But that's sort of, that's what I would do with each of these. See, so again, here you can see on this piece, the leftover thread. I'm going to pull that out. Where did you go? Donde esta? There. Aha. So here we go. There it is. I'm going to slip this tool. I wish I could show you. I know you're like, why don't you have your camera set up? I don't, because I'm just doing this on the fly. Here we go. So there, I'm sliding that into the elastic. Now, and it's into the elastic, into the thread, and pulling it out bit by bit. There we go. If I can get this piece out, there you go. What about you? Why aren't you coming out? I don't want to. Come on, get on the car. I don't want to get on the car. So nearly there. I feel fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're finishing up. It is not wanting to come out. That's interesting. Somewhere in here is a knot of a lot of uh, thread hiding. So that piece isn't coming out. So in this case, I'm just going to trim it just a little bit. Get that clean. Clean, clean, clean. Come on. There we go. There it is. It's right there. I can see it. There. Now it's a little bit cleaner on the end. And again, you can just take some nail polish or you can burn it to seal it. There's something a little bit left here. Here, You're like, Georgia, why do you care? Sometimes just doing this is so zen. Sometimes it's just amazing. So now you can see the difference between the clean side and this other side that's still got a lot of leftover stuff before I can use it. This piece is actually almost too short, but I might be able to use it on um, just a pair of ballet slippers, just doing a piece on one side of the ankle to the other. You never know when you're going to need a spare piece of elastic for something, and it's just great to have that stuff on hold. Uh, you know what, though? I am going to wrap up for today. It's only 9.54, but I've got to get on to something else that I need to get done today, and I think we've covered a lot. I need to finish cleaning up this. I'm not cleaning up this mess, but it's basically just a lot of elastic. Let's just face it. It's a lot of elastic. So I think you're getting the drift here. Uh, let me know. If you have any questions about any of this or comments, or if you're like, okay, what the heck, you're nutty nut. This is going to look even funnier if I'm like 80 doing these. Well, look at this elastic from 1983. This actually, ooh, that is probably really old. Who knows? Um, <laughs> like, what the heck? Uh, but um, I am curious to hear your thoughts. If you have any uh, issues with your shoe accoutrement, uh, your sewing issues and things like that. Next time we come back, I'll have all my stuff together and then I'll be ready to actually do some sewing. But the main point of this is for everyone to get together. And so once I can get, you know, more live streaming up and do like a, we can, we can hopefully do more of a quilting bee on something like TikTok or something like that. But that's down the road. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell, dingy thingy, uh, for more content coming up. I will be doing another Stretch and Fetch live stream next weekend, but I've got a couple of videos I'm working on to actually edit and put out for you guys. 
And uh, I really appreciate you all being here or stopping by to watch this channel. Uh, and it feels really good to share all of this knowledge. Uh, and again, take what you like, leave the rest. Or just feel good about what you're doing that I'm not doing, that you feel like, no, oh, I'm doing it right, she's doing it wrong. Whatever it is um, that helps you improve as a dancer, I'm here for it. And improve as a human being uh, in the long run. That's even more important. You've been watching Ballerina Badass. My name is George Reed. Never give up. Never stop dancing. Unless, of course, you need to give up and you need to stop dancing. That's quite all right. Uh, yeah. Happy Sunday. All right. I'm not going to kiss my hands because they're covered in gunk. Toy, toy, toy. I love you. <laughs> wow.